The Amazing Spider-Man, issue number 815, with Rhino on the cover of the book. Usually Nick Spencer's been starting off with summarizing the last previous issues. This is a part one. Instead it's with some villainry. We get to see Craven the Hunter. What's he up to? Uh, next little bit of the book, the story part of the book. It's kind of a redemption of, you know, super villains that Peter's been facing. We get Dr. Connors over here in, in some sort of a family sit-in. He's having his dinner, I guess. Peter's present. And uh, the son mentioned something about, I look like a mutant and I can't be in school, but there's a school for mutants. He's like, absolutely not. That's not happening. Son gets excused from the dinner table, flips out. Um, it's weird, man. But looks like Jameson's gone good. He's gone good. Rano, Rano has gone good also. Man, this is all, this is all heading somewhere. I know where this is heading. I don't like that. These villains are gonna be screwed by Peter Parker. They're gonna say, we've gone good and you're still gonna treat us like that? I'm even more mad at Spider-Man and I know your secret identity. I feel like that's where this is heading, which I don't like. I think Bendis said this about writers. When you finish up wrapping up a story, you know, you, maybe you have 30 issues with, uh, with a character, you gotta give it back to the next writer the same way you got it. And he said it like it was a good thing. That's why War Machine was dead in Civil War II and issue 600 of Iron Man, the War Machine was back alive because he had to honor. And I'm just like, nah, how are we ever gonna progress? That's my opinion. So let's go to the next page here. Remind myself what happened. Aunt May is grieving her loss, her lost loved one, and she's having a sit down dinner with um, the attorney. Now the attorney tries to be nice and sincere to Aunt May, and he says, I'm here for you, you need anything. And she flips the table and says, I see what you're trying to do. It's not going to work. How dare you? Calls him his full name. And it's like, whoa. But this is the artwork that accompanied that. You see the hearts that they drew on the page? You see, the way I explained it, it made it seem like Aunt May was weird. But this artwork justifies her reaction. She reacted accordingly, and there's nothing wrong with what she did. So she steps out of the restaurant and she sees some kids bugging this homeless man. And she's nice. Some women have a rape whistle, some women have pepper spray. She's got some super powered rape whistle pepper spray thing because that's what scares off these kids. And she's like, why don't you come in here? We're going to treat you to a nice, decent meal like you're, a, like you're a decent man. Like, that's great. Good job, Aunt May. You're a superhero. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, Peter and Mary Jane walking and talking. And in the back, you can see Fabio Medina, a.k.a. Goldballs, who Chris Bacello also created in Uncanny X-Men. I see what you're doing. And he's a Miles Morales, so... Uh... Sorry, it's been a minute and the dogs are still barking. I'm just going to continue. Of uh, Paco Medina. Fabio Medina has been a Miles Morales uh, supporting cast character. And I think this Spider-Man of that book and this book have the same editor, so things like that can happen. Either way, it was cool to see. But Mary Jane and Peter, they're talking about something and they say that you've been here, you're in your mid-twenties. hated seeing and hearing that Peter is actually in his mid-twenties. Because it means that, you know, he got bit as a teenager in his mid-teens. Only 10 years have passed in the Marvel Universe since 1960. August 10th, 1962. Uh, now, speaking of the X-Men, Gold Balls has graduated from his class at the end of Wolverine and the X-Men. And the Uncanny team has joined the school by then. It was graduation day. Uh, that means that there were only 10 graduation days in those years. At least. But I can think of many. I think, I think... Cyclops has aged and, and other characters have aged where it just does not make sense. Please make him older. This is, please make time have passed. Because go ahead and make this dude in his 30s, 35. You can have Tony Stark really, really old, 55. You can have Captain Rogers be, be old. And then it's superheroes. You just give them a magic. Look, there's this inhuman. If he touches you, he makes you younger. And... Everyone's like, yeah, I'm down for that. Uh, maybe Steve Rogers might not be down with it because he's all noble and he's all about, you know, I'm a man out of time. I don't need more of it. And then we find out that this inhuman or whoever it is that's making them younger is siphoning life off of loved ones. Yeah, I can give you life, 
but where do you think it's coming from? You can't just give without taking. So, yes, Peter, I made you younger, but I took those three years from Aunt May. Oh, that's a beautiful story. Thumbs up. I'm going to put a poll on this video on the top right. Of the, if you like this story, go ahead and tell me that you like this story, because that's a great-ass story. I should write for Marvel. Um, I'm really spazzing out over one little thing that Mary Jane said. He's in his mid-twenties. You, you guys probably already know that. This was me reading it in actual print and being like, ah, oh, fuck. It really has only been 10 years. That whole sliding timeline thing's for real. Ah, back to the story of the book. At dinner, Aunt May is talking to the homeless man. And look who comes in. There's a reason why he's on the cover. Homeboy Rhino is, on, is in there. And uh, Peter shows up and he goes, oh, I mean, Mrs. Parker. And he saves the day, or at least he tries to. Him and Rhino kind of team up and... Taskmaster and Black Ants are the villains in the book who Rhino is fighting with Spider-Man. The book ends on a cliffhanger with Aunt May. I know this is a part one of a story, so what they're implying is happening to Aunt May isn't... I don't know how, like, I look at that last page and I'm like, how the hell are they going to get at this one? But we know that they will, right? We know it, don't we? But do we really? No, we, we know. We know. Um, <laughs> that, that's the review, man. That's me giving you my thoughts on Amazing Spider-Man number 815. I like using the legacy numbering. I want to give this book a 7 out of 10. This was a good story. Uh, not exactly a glowing recommendation, but it was part one. The last bit at the end, if it's fake, then yeah, of course, I'm justified in giving it the 7. If it's actually real, and then it gets bumped up to a 10 because this is pretty significant and eventful. I'll always credit things for that. But uh, unless people start talking about, I read The Amazing Spider-Man, issue 15, legacy number 815, then this book gets a 7 and I'm comfortable doing that. Uh, my name is Chill Monger. I am a YouTuber here. Check out my previous videos that I just pointed at. And if you're not down with that, I got two words for ya. Not gonna say it.